Good morning everyone, today we're looking at Acnea Marie Reginae, beautiful, stunning Brom, known as the Queen of the Broms sometimes. Queen of Acnea, I should say. So one of the Queens of Acnea, just a really huge, large bromeliad and it takes a long time to get to this stage, seven years from a pup. And I recently, we just chopped a bit of a tree back and it let more light in and she's come into flower. Um, so when I first started collecting some of the acnea, someone said to me, oh, you need the queen, the queens of acnea, which Marie Regine and Ursula, Ursula Macorvii. And it's a species acnea, so if you love collecting acnea species, it's definitely one that you'd have in your collection. Possibly even too large for the shade house, or unless you've got a really, really large shade house, you have to Probably going to take up the room of about 20 regular size bromeliads, so a whole entire corner possibly of the shade house. So nice outside if you can give it a bit of filtered light. Um, wouldn't give it too full sun. And this species of bromeliad, Acmea Marie Regine, is dioecious, which means it has the male and the female uh, reproductive. So it's got all it needs in itself to reproduce. And the inner bracts, inner flowers, just opening up. Some of the little inner ones. I thought I'd bring you down to have a, more of a look how, how it's all opening up to the second stage and the third stage with the pink. So we've got pink and purple little flowers opening up. So yeah, it's pretty magnificent. There's a little ladybird enjoying the beautiful best of it. Great place to hang out for a ladybird. Quite a plain looking brom when it's not in flower or anything. It's just plain green. And then you don't want to mistake it for a Blanchardiana. Um, and it's much wider. It's 1.5 meters wide. Blanchardianas sort of grow a bit taller and leggy. And these ones just form this massive, beautiful, big, massive rosette shape. If you like plants like Angelopsis skinneri or some of the large, really large acmeas, um, it's well worth having this one. It's pretty awesome, quite slow growing, quite plain as I said green, but really, really beautiful species to grow. So today's going to be fun. We might go around and look at some of the other acmeas because the year of the COVID, everything seems to be flowering this year. So. We'll go and have a look at some of the other fantastic ones. We'll zip down the shade house. I want to show you Valencia and then we'll come back up to the garden and I'll show you something else. One or two. Yeah, so this is Acmea Valencia, which is a beautiful hybrid Acmea. So not a species, a cross of Pendiflora and Ramosa and a beautiful hybrid Acmea Valencia. And I've only ever seen one for sale once before. So when I, I'd just gone a year not finding a new Acmea. So I'd go to lots of Brom's house looking for acmeas that I don't already have. And when I finally got the opportunity to get this one, I grabbed on it and I got it from a lovely person to get these things. And I thought, oh, that might be nice, but yeah, I'm absolutely adoring it. And it started out beautiful red color all over, reddish color. And then it turned this beautiful claret color, like really intensified to a really deep claret red and has flowered. So coming out of spring, another beautiful one. So at the same time as uh, lipstick is flowering in the shade house in the other side. So we've finally made it into where the acmeas are. And up till very recently, all I've been able to do is just admire Valencia from the other side and zoom in because somebody filled up the acmea shade house. So it's taken quite a bit of effort just to clear a bit of the path to get in here to do some maintenance and things. And the pathways are only narrow, so it's a similar setup as the other side where if you if a brom ends up in the pathway you literally can't walk because there's nowhere to walk. There's definitely been some pre-COVID brom hoarding going on in the past. It's definitely good to be on this side looking into where we normally are instead of being in there looking in here and not being able to get in here. So yeah, I feel much more comfortable in with the acmeas. So while we're in here, we might as well have a look at some. And I grow Valencia 
um, on the side of the Agnia house it gets a bit of shade so on the shady side of the Agnia it's still the sunny side next to my Lauren electors and they don't need to be on this side they could be on the full sun side of the shade house not the side that gets the afternoon shade and they're quite different this year one's got much more white on them I love them both and they've just come such a long way like they whiten up so much as they mature and they were so pinky red to start with so I'm pretty impressed and actually one looks like it's going into flower already and it doesn't seem that long since the last time that Lorena lecture flowered I think uh, I suppose it would be easily two years so not complaining though and a very nice near Julia to grow and that's one of the other reasons that it's quite full up in this section is there's a lot of uh, neogelias in the acnes that need more light. So I want to show you Lorna, just neo not Lorna, not neo Lorna Electra. Because I grew Lorna in the other shade house and it's not a patch on what it is. So this is on the sunny side of the shade house. So 50% sun. And yeah, it's by far the nicest one. Oh, it's going into flower as well. And the colour will intensify a lot more that pinky purple so I will come I'll come back and have a look as it's um, almost finished and flowering so back to some of the Agnia um, JC Superstar love that one a bit of a favorite one it's got a beautiful pup on it stunning and I keep Agnia Jesus Christ Superstar in the middle of the shade house so it doesn't get any shade at all um, in the sun just the 50% shade cloth so the sunny side of the shade house with the Acmeas it does really well in the middle. So let's start with Acmea Fosters. It's a great plant to start with and it's also a good one to learn about the people like Foster, Foster and Malfordii and there's a lot of information about them. So. so I grow a lot of them in the trees in the garden but I have the variegated one Foster's favourite, favourite, favourite which is really nice like a sport, it's gorgeous. And the flowers look like these. And it climbed out of its pot really badly recently. So I think it's another reason I needed to get into the shade house. And also some of the acnias that I put up high, they start to lean over and tilt when they're uh, flowering, when they finish flowering for the pups. So I keep a lot of them on the ground now because otherwise you can come down here if you're not down checking all the time. They might have fallen over because they can get such a lean that if the pots are up high they fall over but yeah Foster's favourite and climbed out of its pot and how good does my Neo Wild Rabbit look? last time I saw it it was about half the size and probably pushing the sun so I want to put that into the sunny side where it gets a bit of afternoon shade because I found out, found out the variegated minis um, some of them do a lot better with a little bit of shade and not on the sunny side and then over here Acme Peaches and Cream, Acme Flamingo, and also Acme Burt. So Acme Burt's a great plant to start with. There's Acme Burt, Acme Burt Species Clone, and also Acme Variegated Burt, or Burt Variegated. And I grow some of the Burt in the shade house, and I also grow some in the garden too. They're pretty good landscaping plants as well. And when I first started, got into bronze, I remember saying, how will I ever tell the difference between Burt and Acnea Fosteriana and Orlandiana and some of those other ones? And my bronze friend said, the Orlandiana is quite different. It's much shorter and stouter plant, whereas the um, Burt and Fosteriana and all that get quite tall. And she also said that the, I think it's Burt gets more stiff upright leaves, whereas Acnea Fosteriana, the leaves kind of droop on them because the flowers can be quite similar on those two not so much Orlandiana so most of the Orlandianas I grow outside in the garden and I just keep the fancy ones in here like Black Beauty and Snowflake and all those ones and then in the garden I've got some like Orlandiana hybrids a few of them but most of them nothing too fancy and I've been Fosteriana which has the floppier leaves and they all grow really well in the rockeries as well as in the shade house and also a variegated bird I keep in the shade house, still trying to work out if it needs a sunny side or just a little bit of afternoon shade. But Snowflake and Black Beauty look better than they ever have in the um, full sun side of the shade house. 
once I've cleared a little bit more of the track, the pathway to get to them. And I'll show you some of the variegated Orlandianas next time, such as Reverse Ensign and Ensign. And there might be an Albo Marginata burnt down there too. Who knows what we'll find down there. And I've had all these ones a long time, these kinds of bombs. Collected them for a long time, had them for years. And then the kind of brom I don't mind hoarding, like I could have multiples of them and that sort of thing. They're really nice in clumps. And just to see the difference between giving them more light from the old shape house to the new shape house, it's such a difference. But I want to show you something really cool now. Remember I showed you Acne of Valencia before and it had the beautiful orange and yellow flowers. We'll now have a look at it. It's got this beautiful pinkish hue all over. Isn't that beautiful how the colours changed again? That is so gorgeous. I've really enjoyed growing this plant, like Acme of Valencia. It's just been a really beautiful plant to grow. And when it flowered, the beautiful orange-yellow colour, I thought oh, it's a little bit like Acme of Flame, which I keep up in the garden. I'll just show you some of the Acme of Flames. They're orange and yellow, different, different completely, but I just wasn't expecting the Valencia to turn pink. And yeah, I keep the Agnia Flame just in the morning sun in the garden and I keep it under Nelson Mandela, Strelitzia Nelson Mandela. That's where the Agnia Flame lives. But yeah, this Valencia, I just can't rave it. It's so beautiful. It's just so good to be able to be on this side of the shade house to be able to show you um, Valencia and some of the others. Check out my Neo Bottoms Up. And then I've got some Acmea Vin Rose over here and they were climbing out of the pot too by the time I came in here though. And I wouldn't worry too much but it's just they were getting on top of everything else. And I've had these a long time. I originally grew them in the big hanging baskets and then I moved them into my light in here into a big pot. And they've just been down the back here. And then I also have some in the trees as well. And growing in the garden and then I have Acme Jean in the garden too in some rockeries and then I also have Acme Jean growing in some trees and some Acme Fosters I showed you that one before there's some more of it around here so what next um, check out my maculata my Acme maculatas just popped itself up to say hello recently it's also flowering in spring which reminds me, the Acmea albo bromifolia is also flowering, so we'll go down and have a look at that next. It's kind of cool, it gets this really big urn shape kind of plant. These ones are growing in the shade. I've grown it in half sun or half to three quarters before, but it's doing really well down here in this big clump. And it gets its name from the beautiful white flower bracts. So next we could have a look at Acmea smithii. Pretty cool, Smithii or Smithioria, or sometimes called Acnea serrata. And I grow it in the shade house as well as in the garden. Gardens. And what else? Uh, oh, Acnea recurvata. It's another one I've got in the garden, in, in the rockeries and around the stairs. It's a really good one. If you're looking for a small type Acnea, and it's a really good one for the front row or along the pathways and everything. And then Acme a pie in the sky, that's another one I grow in the shade house and I also grow it around the garden in different sort of positions. Not quite full sun, but sort of half sun or in the shade it does well. And I'll show you all some more amazing broms very soon. And I just wanted to share Acme Marie Regine with you. Um, it's not every day that it flowers, like once in seven years or so. It's certainly one of the biggest Acmeas that I've ever grown. It's like too big to fit literally to fit in the car to take to a show. So I just wanted to share it all with you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye everyone.